Hello, my friends, and welcome to Tea Time Tales. I am your storyteller, Owen Pilgrim. And I have to apologize, it's been a while since my last Tea Time Tales video. Uh, but things have been fairly busy with the Telltale Tea Company. But today, I've brought you to a special place. Now, this is quite close to my home. And I don't know if you can see, but on the other side of the bank, there's a badger set. And all around here, there's the sign of recent activity of the badgers. It's a real badger community down in this little den. And it's sort of fitting for the story that I'm going to tell you. The story I've got for you today is called The Wonderful Tea Kettle, and it's a traditional folk tale from Japan. So long ago, there was an old monk, an old poor monk, and he lived in a temple with other young monks up in the hills near a village. Now the thing about this area was they grew some of the finest tea in all of Japan. And so the monk loved to brew up his own tea. At the end of each day, he would sit down and he would boil up his kettle and he would put in the fine tea leaves and make a cup of tea. It was his favorite moment of the day to sit with his lovely tea. But the tea kettle that he used was very old. It was older than him and it was older than his grandfather. And who knows how long this tea kettle had been used for, and it was getting quite worn. And one day, when he set the charcoal underneath the kettle, the kettle split. And it wasn't fixable. It was done. It had had its day, and it was no longer of use. And the poor monk was very sad to have lost the tea kettle. He was heartbroken for a, a little while. And then he thought, you know, things come and go in this life, and I'm sure another tea kettle will come my way when the time is right. So he had to go without his cup of tea that night, and he lay down and went to sleep. Well, the next day, he got up, and he opened up the doors of the temple. And what a surprise he got! Because there, sitting on the front step of the temple, was a tea kettle. It was a bit old and a bit dirty, but it looked like a fine tea kettle indeed. So he took it inside and he cleaned it up, and sure enough, under all the dirt and tarnish was a beautiful brass tea kettle. The monk couldn't believe it, how quickly it had come into his life, and he couldn't wait to try it out and make a cup of tea. And so once all the day's routine was done, he did as usual, and he got the charcoal going, and he got some tea leaves, and he got this beautiful new brass tea kettle. And he got water, poured it in, and set it on top of the charcoal. And he sat back and he waited with a grin on his face, looking at this fine brass tea kettle. And as he sat there waiting for the water to boil, the tea kettle began to shake and rattle. The monk had never seen anything like this happen before. It shook and it rattled and suddenly, poof, out of one end of the kettle came a big furry face with a nose and two ears. And then, poof, out the other side, there came a tail. And then, poof, 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 four legs popped out of all sides of the kettle. And the kettle although still shaped like a kettle, was covered in fur and hair, and it was all striped like that of a badger. The monk didn't know what was going on, but the tea kettle let out a yelp and jumped off of the charcoal and started to run around. Well, the monk didn't know what to do. He chased after it, and the badger tea kettle kept running away from him. And the badger tea kettle jumped and tumbled and flipped and somersaulted and at one point it jumped up on a shelf and started to beat its chest and it was so loud because it was still partly a kettle it was like playing a drum and this woke up all the other monks who came running in and they couldn't believe their eyes to see this badger tea kettle running around causing mayhem with the old monk chasing after it trying to catch it 
And the old monk was saying, get back here, get back here, you're wrecking everything. And it certainly was. It was knocking things off the shelf and turning things over and jumping here and jumping there and causing a right old ruckus. And no matter what the monks did, they could not catch it. Some of them got sticks and began to beat it. Other monks ran after it and tried to jump on it. But no matter how much they tried, they could not catch this badger tea kettle. And this went on for hours, with a badger tea kettle tumbling here and there, making a complete mess of the temple. Until finally, one of the young, young monks had an idea. And he went and got a barrel that was used for pickling. And it was just big enough to get the tea kettle inside of. So eventually they managed to corner the badger tea kettle and plump, put the barrel over the top of it. And then they got the lid and sealed it up. And for a little while, the tea kettle could be heard rattling about inside and then it was completely silent. And the monks were so exhausted, they just went straight to sleep. And the next day, they had to get up and tidy up the mess. Then everything was turned upside down. And so it took them a while to tidy everything up and clean up after the mayhem of this badger tea kettle. It just so happened that day a tinker came up from the village, as he often did. He came up to see if anything needed fixed or maybe if something was broken. And when he got there, he saw the monks tidying up and asked them what had happened. And they told him the fantastic story of the badger tea kettle. Now the tinker wasn't quite sure if he could believe this or not, but he took the monks at their word, thought maybe they'd just gotten a bit carried away with a story in their heads. And he said, you know what, I could take away that tea kettle for you and, and bring you a new one if you like. And of course the old monk agreed immediately. And so the tinker took the barrel away, went back to his shop and he brought back a nice new kettle for the old monk. And the old monk was overjoyed. He finally get to have his cup of tea. And the tinker went back to his shop and him and his wife looked at the barrel and they said, well, do you think the story is true? There's only one way to find out. They opened up the barrel and they looked inside and in the bottom of the barrel was a fine brass tea kettle. Well, the tinker and his wife thought those monks just must have gotten carried away with themselves a bit. And they put the brass kettle in the corner of the shop. It was a fine thing to look at. And they went to sleep. But in the middle of the night, they heard a noise, a clanking and banging. And they turned on the lantern and looked in the corner, and there, the brass tea kettle was shaking and rattling, and a head popped out of one side with two ears and beady eyes, a tail popped out the other side, four legs popped out, and there was the kettle covered in hair, looking very much like a badger. And the tinker didn't know what to do, but... It was a tea kettle that spoke up first and said, No, 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 please, please, please don't put me on a hot fire and please don't beat me with sticks. Honestly, I uh, mean no harm at all. In fact, I, I want to help you if I can. And the tinker said, Well, how could you possibly help me? Well, said the tea kettle, and it jumped off the stand and did a somersault onto the ground. And then it bounced this way and bounced that way and grabbed a parasol that happened to be in the corner and then jumped up the shelves, and there was a clothesline across the shop. And the tea kettle did a walk, a tightrope walk along that clothesline, and jumped down with the parasol, did another somersault, and bowed, and said, well, maybe we could put on a show. And the tinker said, well, what do you want in exchange? And the badger said, well, nothing much. Some sweet cakes every now and then, and, and maybe a cup of tea. But that's all I ask. I would very much like to help you out. Well, the tinker thought about this. He thought, you know, it would make a great show. And he imagined the backdrop that he could get made, and the set he could create, and take this wonderful tea kettle out on the road. And said, well, maybe we could tea kettle. Now, who are you? And the tea kettle said, Well, I am Bambuku Chagama. 
and I can put on a fine show, and I will travel with you wherever you wish to go. And so that was it. The tinker and Bambuku Chagama decided they would go on the road. And the tinker did have a fine set created. He had a backdrop that was painted with Mount Fuji, with cranes flying across the sky and cherry blossoms at the side. And then he had a set created, which looked just like a tea room and with a table in the middle, where would sit the wonderful tea kettle. And so at the beginning of the show, the audience would come in, and they'd look at this set, it looked like a perfectly innocent tea room with a tea kettle in the middle. And then as they watched, right before their eyes, there came a head, a tail, and four legs, and the tea kettle, Bambuku Chagama, jumped off of the table and did somersaults and twists and turns and took up a perfectly made little parasol just the right size for Bambuku Chagama that the tinker had made. And off it went, hopping up and up and up until it reached a tightrope and walked across the stage and somersaulted down and then ended up back on the table as a perfectly innocent brass tea kettle again. And they took the show out on the road. And it was a great success. People came from all over to see this wonderful tea kettle, Bambuku Chagama, and his show. And they traveled all over Japan for many years, the tinker and his wife and Bambuku Chagama. And this news of this show spread all around the land and people came. And they were amazed at the sight and the children laughed and it was a fine sight, a fine show indeed. And the tinker and his wife became fairly wealthy as this went on. But then one day, Bambuku Chagama spoke to the tinker and said, I'm tired. We've put on a wonderful show all this time, but I am now exhausted. And I think I just want to turn back into a normal tea kettle for a while and have a long, long rest. And you know, Tinker, you have enough money now to last you the rest of your days so you and your wife can live a comfortable life. And the Tinker saw this was right. It was okay for Bambuku Chagama to retire and go back to just becoming a kettle again. So they bid farewell to Bambuku Chagama, and he turned back into a regular brass tea kettle again. But now what to do with it? Well, the tinker had an idea. He picked up Bambuku Chagama and carried him back to the temple. Now the monks were no longer afraid because the story of Bambuku Chagama had spread all around Japan and they knew how famous this tea kettle now was. So they welcomed it in and they gave it a special place in the temple that was reserved for precious treasures and there it would be kept and cared for. And there it stayed for many, many, many years. In fact, it might even still be there. So maybe one day, Bambuku Chagama will come back and put on some more shows for us. Who knows? And that is the story of the wonderful tea kettle. So now you can see why I brought you here, to be amongst the badgers. And I wonder if they've maybe heard the story too. I'll maybe come back later and ask them if they've heard of Bambuku Chagama. In fact, maybe the badgers are listening right now. And thank you for joining me for Tea Time Tales. As I said, I'm Owen Pilgrim, and I run the Telltale Tea Company, which combines stories and tea. If you'd like some delicious organic teas, please visit our web website of the Telltale Tea Company. And if not, just come and listen to the stories. I'm very happy to share them with you. Thank you very much. And maybe I'll see you again sometime.